I assured Shrimati Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi that and Mr. Kalika Malika Jinkarge that I will deliver Karnataka to their fold. We fought with love and love and open this fight. In the bazaar of Karnataka, there are closed shops in the bazaar. I am very happy that in this collective leadership, we fought the election and got it to the end. Victory and defeat are not new to Bharati Janata Party. Party workers need not to be panicked by these results. Yes, the people of Karnataka have voted the Congress to power, keeping with the state's trend of a revolving government every five years. The grand old party has emerged victorious with a clean sweep, crossing the halfway mark of 113 with a comfortable majority. The state is in the Congress's kitty as the BJP has lost its only bastion in the south with Karnataka Chief Minister Basavraj Bombay conceding defeat. Remember, Bombay, whose government had faced massive corruption allegations for the better part of two years. State uh, Congress Chief D.K. Shivakumar teared up and uh, teared up and thanked the party, the people, Gandhis and Siddharamaya as well. Now the big question is, who will Congress be picking it as their chief ministerial face. Both Siddharamaya and Shiva Kumar are powerful leaders with a strong support base and their rivalry is set to challenge the Congress in the coming days. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV18. I'm Parikshit Lutra and you're watching our special coverage on the Karnataka election result. To begin our special edition tonight, we have on the show with our senior journalist Rashid Kidvai, leader of the JDS, Sayyid Aslam, National spokesperson for the BJP, Syed Zafar Islam, Rohan Gupta, spokesperson of the Congress Party. We'll also be joined by Rahul Sharma, resident political analyst, uh, DP Satish of Network 18, lawyer and member of Bangalore Political Action Committee, and Harish, and also Richard Rosso of Center for Strategic and International Studies will be joining us shortly. Yes, uh, let's uh, go across to our guest, starting with Mr. Rashid Kidvai, joining us in our studios. Mr. Kidvai, was the shift visible on the ground over the last few months? And did you expect an election result that would give 135 plus seats to the Congress party? Uh, uh, well, I think uh, the Congress was very well entrenched in Karnataka at the ground level. Uh, remember, the Congress president also comes from Karnataka. A lot of hard work had gone in. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, D.K. Shivkumar, who is the Congress president, had been working for the past three years during the COVID time. There are a lot of things are there that were happening on the ground. So I think when the election was fought and... Uh, Prakshit, we must remember the election in Karnataka was fought in a very contrasting style. The BJP went on a very high voltage uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, campaign and where uh, Prime Minister Modi led that campaign and it revolved around a lot of negative aspects, whereas the Congress stuck to its script. They confined themselves to local issues. They highlighted this thing. There were some distractions, but I think the Congress played its cards well. So... It, uh, long and short, a clear message that if Congress has, you know, regional satraps, uh, a party on the ground, then there is no reason why Mr. Modi's party cannot be checked. Right. So you're saying that they had strong regional leaders to check the BJP. Let me go across to D.P. Satish. Uh, D.P. Satish, you've been traveling the length and breadth of Karnataka, uh, and you know Karnataka very, very well. Uh, Twelve sitting ministers lost their seats. What does this say about the government? What, according to you, was the biggest reason for the fall of the BJP in the state? And has this result really shocked BJP insiders? Parikshit, the Congress's victory was expected. I was expecting Congress to win about 120 seats because Congress ran a highly efficient poll campaign this time. And Congress was expected to cross halfway mark of 113. Congress's five guarantee scheme and also cash realignment has helped Congress immensely. Look at the candidates, those who have won across Karnataka, Kittur Karnataka region, Hyderabad Karnataka region, Central Karnataka region, and Old Mysore region. And there has been a major cash realignment. Lingayat seems to have voted Congress in a large number because out of 51 Lingayat candidates, 38 have won. And their strike rate is 75%. Uh, about 30% of the Congress MLS are Lingayat now. And secondly, Wakaliga bad. The JDS has collapsed completely because of DK Shukumar. Because DK Shukumar himself a Gouda, and the Wakaliga cast seem to have backed D.K. Shukumar and they have preferred D.K. Shukumar over the Gouda family. That's why JDS has collapsed. 
and Congress has swept Gowda districts of Chikmagalur. They have done very well in Mandya. They have swept Mandya district and Mysore, Chamrajnagar. Then also Bangalore rural, Ramnagara district and Tumkur also they have swept. And Ahinda, what Sidramanya calls Ahinda, the minorities, backward classes and SCs, they are about 50% of Karnataka's total population and they seem to have backed Congress fully because Congress has won 15 <coughs> ST seats and Congress has also won a lot of SC seats and Congress has won a lot of backward classes seats. And the Idiga community in Malnad region seem to have returned to Congress once again because Congress has won a lot of seats in Malnad region with the support of the major backward classes community, the Edigas or the Tadi Tappers. And the BJP campaign wasn't as effective as the Congress because Congress had localized the election and BJP had nationalized the election. BJP fought this election on the usual things, the hmm. same old things, but Congress had localized the election and this time Sidharamaya and DK Shukmar led the campaign, not the Gandhis. Gandhis played a supplementary role, but the leaders, those who led the campaign, were Sidharamaya and DK Shukmar, backed by Mr. M.B. Patil, another important Lingayat leader of the party. Right. Hmm. That's a, that's a very uh, strong and good observation that uh, the BJP had nationalized this election, Congress was fighting it on regional issues, and that uh, makes us go across to Zafar Islam of the BJP. Uh, Zafar Islam, we saw Prime Minister Modi going on a campaign blitzkrieg. You had 19 election rallies, six roadshows by the Prime Minister, a galaxy of BJP ministers, chief ministers campaigning in the state, J.P. Nadda, Amit Shah, you also had uh, Yogi Adityanath campaigning in the state. What went wrong for the BJP and how will the BJP now go back to the drawing board? Well, <clears throat> the result is out. Obviously, we were not expecting this result. So, I, first of all, uh, I would like to congratulate the Congress spokesperson that they, they have won this election and our <clears throat> best wishes to them. And definitely we will behave like a constructive opposition party where we will provide all the support, but we will also expect that whatever promises have been made by the Congress party, they must fulfill the expectation and aspiration of the people of Karnataka. Having said that, now the result is out. We will definitely introspect why we have lost the election, where we went wrong, because uh, our expectation was definitely that we would be at least 125, 125 seats. But the result is very different than what our expectation was. Definitely something has gone wrong. There are, there are something which is very obvious, like uh, the JDS vote has, transfer, has been transferred to uh, Congress party. J they have misled, Congress party has misled. They ran a campaign which is absolutely factually incorrect, like uh, the corruption charges they were making on, uh, uh, the allegation they were making on some of the our leaders. Factually, it was incorrect, but yes, they have been able to run this campaign they also misled the Muslim community. They also misled that the reservation, we are taking out the reservation, but of course the reservation is very much there for the, the deserving Muslim uh, OBC, which was there, which will continue to be there, but the, these people misled the, misled the community and partly uh, 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 the, uh, JDS could not counter those uh, allegations or the statement because Muslim vote definitely shifted from JDS to Congress party and that has made the difference because our percentage, uh, vote percent, we have been able to retain. But who is, uh, how they have won is primarily because the JDS has lost its crown and that has, the vote has been transferred to uh, Congress party and that has helped them to win uh, uh, higher seats. Having said that, we will definitely introspect. We will, if there are any shortcomings which we, which we feel uh, 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 after the analysis, we feel that it needs to be uh, corrected. We will do the course correction. But this election, particular election, we feel that it is primarily because of the misleading information by the Congress party. A lot of uh, lies have been spread by the Congress party and that has somehow the narrative they, have built, they had built. We may have not been able to counter the way we should have countered. is something which we feel that is so apparent. But the exact reason why we right. have not been able to live up to the expectation of the people of Bar uh, Karnataka is something we will get to know once the analysis the introspection part is done, analysis part of it is done, the booth level of uh, feedback is done, and then we will be able to do the cross correction as well. Right. Uh, so you're saying a misleading campaign by the Congress, which the BJP was not able to counter, has succeeded in this election. 
But many say that all of this was expected. So many journalists, so many political experts, uh, Zafar Islam, who had been touring the length and breadth of the state, were quite certain that Congress is likely to win this election. But uh, Sayyid Aslam, if I can come to you, a bad day for JDS and HD Kumar Swami, 18 seats down compared to the last election result. Uh, you have the BGP spokesperson saying that the Congress is succeeding because the JDS vote, in a way, many of the Muslims, uh, Muslim voters who were supporting the JDS have shifted to the Congress party in this election. How do you see this, uh, this view right now? And what do you think led to the BGP's defeat in this manner in this election? Sayyid Aslam. Well, uh, Parishit, let me tell you, uh, victory and defeat is part and parcel of uh, any electoral process, and that's the beauty of democracy in India. Uh, well, of course, um, you know, um, uh, this, this we have to see what exactly has gone wrong with JDS. We need to introspect. We need to start from the scratch what exactly has gone wrong. Obviously, we will introspect. We'll, uh, you know, start it from the scratch, and uh, we will definitely bounce back. But at the same time, I would like to... Uh, accept the results with utmost humility. Um, I would like to thank the voters of Karnataka, and also I would like to thank uh, uh, I would like to thank the uh, the party workers, the leaders, and the spokespersons who have put in their heart and soul in these elections. But uh, you know, in any uh, electoral process, victory and defeat is part and parcel, and we should not get bogged down with this. And also, um, you know, Parikshit, there was a clear opportunity uh, for both of us, uh, Congress and uh, uh, the JDS in these elections, because there was a clear uh, uh, anti-government uh, wave. Uh, and of course, uh, the BJP was reeling under the anti-incumbency, corruption charges, inflation, price rise, unemployment. There were a lot of issues. And of course, to deal with all of this, we started the Panch Ratna Yatra way back in November. And we have seen masses joining us, uh, you know, lakhs of people joining us in this Pancharatna Yatra. But um, of, of course, we need to see what exactly has gone wrong when people uh, when people have joined us in lakhs together and it's not converted in the votes. There's a lot of us, uh, there are a lot of things for us to introspect. And uh, uh, of course, we will start it from the scratch. Uh, and finally, uh, last but not the least, right. I would like to congratulate uh, the, the Congress for the huge victory. It's a thumping victory. And I would like to congratulate both Mr. Sidramaya and Mr. D.K. Shukumar for this. But for us, we are starting from the scratch. There is nothing for us to bog, uh, get bogged down. We will start it from the scratch. We'll reach the drawing board. We will uh, introspect what has gone wrong and we'll bounce back again. Okay, let me go across to uh, Rohan Gupta of the Congress Party. Rohan, we've been seeing celebrations, a much-needed uh, victory for the Congress Party. They needed a shot in the arm. But uh, let me uh, begin by asking you, who will be the chief minister of the state of Karnataka now? Will it be Siddharamaya? Will it be D.K. Shivakumar? Who will be rewarded for this election result? See, first of all, I would like to thank people of Karnataka for the confidence they have shown on Congress Party's promises and Congress Party's leadership. Uh, important thing is, I was just listening to BJP spokesperson and other analysts. I think what happened to BJP is they are paying price of ignoring sentiments of people of Karnataka, right? They were not voted to power. Somehow they managed to form the government. After forming government, they had given 600 promises in their manifesto. They could not fulfill even 10% of their promises. They had to change their CM because of 40% corruption charges. And even after that, when, when elections came, they, they raised issues like hijab, azan. All these issues didn't resonate well with the people of Karnataka. They withdrew their, those, those issues. And just, I am here for the last 45 days at Karnataka. Local leadership was totally lost. The local leaders were not strengthened by central leadership. They were weakened. Strong Lingayat leaders, they were not given the tickets. So overall, local leadership has given up the election before 30, 35 days. They had, you know, faith on Mr. Modi and the central leadership that they will come like other states, do something in last 10 days, and people's uh, sentiment will change. No, this is Karnataka. People understand what has been promised to them. People understand what is 40% commission government. And at the same time, we ensured that we keep our election local. We ensured with, with due respect to the people, we identified their demands, what are their core issues, whether unemployment or price rise. We kept our five promises. We ensured that those five promises reaches to the people. BJP tried very hard. In the last 10 days, they tried to change the narrative. They tried to make emotional issues, Hindu, Muslim, everything. Why everything failed? 
is because they didn't respect the sentiment of people of Karnataka, what Karnataka wanted, what people of Karnataka expected mm. from them. And this is a huge lesson for all the political parties that you cannot fight all the elections like Lok Sabha. The state assembly elections have different issues. The Lok Sabha has different issues. The local body elections have different issues. So I think it's a big lesson to BJP for future. And this is very good for the country that this is a win of democracy. And even as a Congress Party worker, it increases our responsibility that we have to be humble and ensure that the promises what we have made to people of Karnataka, they are fulfilled in time-bound manner. As far as CM is concerned, we, we, we are not the party where the one button is pressed from Nagpur and CM is created. It is uh, the, the, the prerogative of our elected MLS. The due process will be followed. And whatever will be the demand or what, what, what the, hmm. the, the, the choice of our MLS, that person will become the CM of Karnataka. Right, uh, Rohan. That that is a uh, that's that's a good way to sum up the Congress's campaign. But as far as uh, the chief ministerial post is goes, uh, I think there will be a big debate over it. There are many contenders within the Congress. D K Shivakumar, Siddharamaiah, both strong faces. How will the Congress uh, balance these interests? This will be important. We're going to take a short break. I request all our guests to stay with us. Don't go anywhere. This is just getting more interesting. में गरीबों के साथ खड़ी हुई हमारा हम गरीबों के मुद्दों पर लड़े और मुझे सबसे अच्छी बात यह लगी कि हमने नफरत से गलत शब्दों से यह लड़ाई नहीं लड़ी हमने मोहब्बत से प्यार से दिल खोल के यह लड़ाई लड़ी और कर्नाटक की जनता ने हमें दिखाया कि यह देश मोहब्बत को मोहब्बत इस देश को अच्छी लगती कर्नाटक में कर्नाटक में नफरत की बाजार बंद हुई है मोहब्बत की दुकानें खुली हैं लेट्स यू एंड मी स्टेप आउट एंड सी हाउ ब्लू द स्काई हाउ टॉल द ट्री Shkara brings you Kushak and Slavia, India's safest family cars. Chale? 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 Saaf hawa enjoy karne ke liye ab kahin aur kyun chale? Voltas ka naya pure air adjustable AC with HEPA filter. Lai saaf thandi hawa seedhe aapke ghar. Wo bhi 6 adjustable tonnage modes mein. To hawa aur savings dono tantanat. helps beat sensitivity fast sensodyne rapid relief the last hour everything can happen between the bells but what happens during the last hour is what matters the most the biggest market swings a close up look at what's driving them and how the investors are reacting Watch the most seasoned market mavens guide you through the most important hour of the trading day. NSE closing bell. At these times, only on CNBC TV18 and CNBCTV18.com. Go powered by IBM. Who who who? Who said the markets can't be exciting? Who? Get the lowdown on the yays and nays. Straight from the top, catch market feels and news reels. Number crunch for the best of the bunch. The bigger queue for the richer you. Hot trends, big noise, what's viral and what's out. We'll give you the market goals you need to stay ahead. Mad about markets. dialogue from Ford versus Ferrari 7000 rpm the machine becomes weightless 9000 rpm that is where the machine and the man become one if there was 
ever a day that felt completely satisfying this would be it Welcome back. You're watching our special coverage on the Karnataka election result, election exchange, and you're watching visuals of the Congress party's press conference. Randeep Singh Surjewala there addressing the media. We believe a high-level meeting of the Congress party is already underway, and uh, this will be taking stock of the election result. What happens next? Remember, Siddaramaiah, the former chief minister of Karnataka, has said that this is his last election. Uh, so let's see if the Congress goes ahead. and gives the chief minister's post to sidaramaiah or dk shivakumar remember there are these two big faces within the congress party and how the congress party balances these two uh, warring interests will be very important for the stability of the congress in the state uh, remember sorjewala and uh, malikarjun kharge the president of the congress party have been credited for keeping the party together and running this campaign uh, along with the host of senior leaders like priyanka gandhi and rahul gandhi as well let me go back to uh, mr rashid kidwai a close observer of indian politics uh, mr kidwai what do you think can happen in uh, in karnataka as far as the chief ministerial position goes what will be the wisest decision for the congress to do keeping in mind the rajasthan example where you've got uh, a uh, gelot a show gelot as a chief minister but you have got a permanently upset such in pilot Yes, I think it's a tricky situation. But the solution is very simple. They should let the MLAs have a say in the sense and decide. Because, as I understand, Mr. Uh, uh, Sadar Amiya has a you know very good uh, a pan Karnataka popular ratings. Mr. Uh, D K Shivakumar has worked very hard. There is of course age and experience factor is there. But let the MLAs decide. If the MLAs, well, majority of Congress MLAs, elected Congress MLAs support Mr. Sadar Amiya, he should have it. If the other way around, then they should do it. And the problem, Prakshit, is that when the Congress leadership tries to impose somebody and that imposition at cost congress dearly in uh, madhya pradesh as well as in rajasthan right let me also well welcome rahul varma political expert on the panel rahul thank you very much for joining us this evening what's your sense uh, of this karnataka election result has it really shown that states where there there are strong leaders regional leaders uh, a polarizing campaign will not really work on the ground people will go with issues go with strong regional leaders uh thank you parikshit uh, uh, see any uh, thing either polarizing campaign or any other issue works in certain context uh, uh you know uh, even with a local localized campaign had bjp been the challenger a polarizing campaign could have worked bjp in karnataka and i'm not saying it will always work but bjp being an incumbent the chances of basically polarizing on the religion axis was lesser uh, the uh, a la large number of people are going to judge uh, the party on its performance as a uh, uh, incumbent party uh, the reason congress managed to do well uh, one as you rightly pointed out and many have before me rightly pointed out that it ran a very very efficient campaign focused on its uh, state level leadership non performance of the bjp government uh and 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 congress as an organization as a party as uh, rashid kidwai earlier pointed out is very formidable in the state of of karnataka and Kan bjp in some ways was also contesting against the weight of history in karnataka in last 25 years no party has come back to power uh and so uh, so so in last couple of months in the run up to campaign there was this this sort of like uh, a thing coming out from the campaign that congress is ahead the only question was whether it will come comfortably cross the majority mark or not and it seemed to have done everything that was needed to basically cross uh, that mark but remember congress should not be uh, uh, in my opinion uh, over it should remain cautious in interpreting uh, this mandate uh, the bjp while it has lost the state continues to retain the vote share uh, of 2018 though the com composition has changed I think the main message for the Congress going from Karnataka is going to be that it seemed to have revived the old social coalition of backward classes, poor, and religious minorities. It has gained in the regions 
uh, uh, especially in the northern Karnataka, which used to be, or Bombay Karnataka, which used to be a stronghold of the BJP. And so some of those things going forward is going uh, it will, will uh, help the Congress to think about its 2024 campaign narrative. Right. Uh, let me again uh, go back to Mr. Rashid Kidwai because Mr. Rashid Kidwai uh, has to go across to another uh, TV studio right now. Of course, a very busy time for political experts and uh, party spokespersons as well. Uh, Mr. Kidwai, coming back to you about the national picture. You had the JDS saying a short while back that they had been campaigning across the state, but somehow they could not capture the imagination of the voter. Does this really have any impact as far as the national picture goes? opposition unity goes or should we be very careful in assessing this impact as a local election on local issues? I think it's a combination of all this, but we must also remember that Karnataka, you know, in BGP had 24 Lok Sabha MPs uh, from Karnataka. If there's a shortfall of, you know, 15 Lok Sabha seats, the BGP is not going to get it from any other state. There are political situation in Maharashtra, political situation in Bihar, political situ situation in Bengal and Karnataka. These four states have a potential to reduce the BGP's current strength by 50 to 60 Lok Sabha seats. This is huge, actually, prediction. Where is BGP going to get these numbers? So these are the challenges that the BJP has to find its way, but I think it's a simplistic way to say that, no, no, the state elections are different and parliamentary elections are different. Our mandate of this nature is very significant. Yes, uh, it is 135 plus uh, seats and it's a significant uh, victory for the Congress party, almost 57 seats up from the last election result. Mr. Kitbhai, thank you once again for being with us here on CNBC TV 18. Let me go across to N. Harish of uh, the Bangalore Political Action Committee. Uh, N. Harish, thank you very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Uh, let me begin by asking you, uh, what would the people of Bangalore be wanting from the new government right now? Of course, political stability is one. There were corruption allegations over the last two years as far as the BGP government in the state goes. What do you expect now? What is the unfinished agenda where would you where you would want action? Uh, my understanding of various issues concerning Bangalore is uh, there's a lot of corruption in in most of the government departments, starting from obtaining a birth certificate, getting a death certificate or a class certificate or a family family tree from a government department and or from a government health center where you need to pay a even to, to the nurse to show the baby after the delivery is, it takes place to the mother to have a look at the glimpse of the of the newborn. Since corruption has been rampant and across the state, and it is general and more particular in Bangalore because Bangalore generates maximum revenue to the state government. And uh, this is a major issue people are worried about about every time. And the other is uh, how do you, uh, you decongest the roads, traffic uh, congestion, the population of traffic is perhaps in the next five years will overtake the population of Bangalore. Also. We have about 96 lakh vehicles in Bangalore with 1.25 crore population in Bangalore. Bangalore. So recently, of course, the government has passed the uh, active mobility bill. Till, uh, the, uh, the, we have a separate Bangalore DMITA bill, the Bangalore Metropolitan Land Transport Authority Act has been in passed. They have to the present or the new government will have to have to put this authority into action so that uh, uh, they will be able to find solution to traffic congestion and provide a last mile connectivity and also monitor and supervise various transport operators including the Uber, Ola, auto rickshaws, uh, the private transport, uh, the metro and the BMTC in Bangalore. Bangalore. The uh, corruption in, in, in the sub office has been rapid. Of course, government, uh, the, the outgoing government has uh, has floated a scheme which is supposed to come into, into action from June 1st, where there will be online registration of, uh, of property registration in all the sub-registrar's office. We should wait and see how the new government is going to take forward this particular uh, new scheme which the, the outgoing government had uh, announced. Uh, this is a major uh, issue in, in Bangalore. As far as Bangalore electorate is concerned, and, uh, there has been not much of a difference in the in the total number of uh, uh, 
NLS or has been elected because uh, out of the 32 seats of Greater Bangalore, not okay. the level that is that is uh, equalized, that both uh, Congress and uh, and the BJP have got 16 seats each. Which we should wait and see how uh, how mm. the uh, okay. new government. Uh, JDS has had announced a separate Bangalore manifesto. Similarly, BJP also, and Congress mm. also has incorporated some of the of the various uh, aspects covering Bangalore specific uh, issues. Uh, because like uh, uh, you need to see that there is uh, okay. the Apartment Ownership Act, uh, which is an archaic act of, of 1972, which at times conflicts with the RERA of the of the RERA Act in our state. Mm. This needs to be amended. And uh, otherwise, right. Mr. apartments which are facing problem in in uh, setting up associations and also uh, ensuring that uh, the various okay. amenities uh, are, Sorry, monitored, we got to come back. are monitored in the right spirit uh, as per the bylaws of various associations, which are conflicting right. with the various. We, we got to come back to you, Mr. Harish. Sir, Thank you so much. We have to take a short break. We have to take a short break. Let's also listen in to what Malikarjun Kharge, the president of the Congress party, had to say about the Congress victory. We're going to take a break with that statement. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Our special guest, our special analysis continues. डिफीड दिया है, उनको हराया है, लेकिन हमको आगे बहुत कुछ करना है, जो वायदे हमने निभाए, वायदे हमको निभाना है, वो हम निभाएंगे। मुझे बड़ी खुशी होती है कि ये जो कलेक्टिव लीडरशिप में हमने इलेक्शन लड़ा और इसको फल मिला। We don't just make new categories, we remake legends. In fact, we make the whole world of India's mobility new forever. Kuch friends na, bilkul family jaise hote hain. Mera flatmate. Just like my mom. Kapde aaj toh ega ya agle saal? Helmet! Oye uthe! Isi liye na, I got us Airtel ka family plan. दो कनेक्शंस सिर्फ 599 में मतलब वे बेटर देन अलग अलग रीचार्ज ना सुन नाश्ता बनाओ फ्रेंड्स हो या कॉलेज्स सबके लिए है एयरटेल फैमिली प्लान आल्सो अवेलेबल फॉर रियल फैमिलीज अ शो दैट इज अनमैच्ड वी टेल यू स्टॉक टू वाच आउट फॉर एंड विच सेक्टर्स आर इंपैक्टेड थॉट प्रोवोकिंग in India, the allocation to equity is about 5 to 10 percent, which is not beating inflation. So, investing aggressively you can actually look at even beating inflation. And will give you maximum value for your money. It is a good time to look at debt funds as a category. There's no better time than this in that sense to lock in rates for the long term. A masterclass with India's biggest market experts. Smart money at these times. Powered by Bandhan Mutual Fund. From David to Goliath. From the smallest business ventures to multi-million dollar global corporations. Meet the movers and shakers. Today's newsmakers. And tomorrow's leaders. Understand what makes markets move. How companies make quantum leaps. And how giant corporations stay ahead. Get the biggest business stories of the day, power-packed into 30 minutes, on Business 360 at these times. This is TV18 and you're watching CNBC TV18. Welcome back to our special coverage of the Karnataka election verdict. All our guests are still with us. Let me... Introduce Richard Rosso of CSIS. He's joining us right now all the way from Washington, D.C. Richard, you're a very close observer of the Indian government, Indian reforms over the last uh, 20 years or so. 
How do you see the Karnataka election? This is a state which has given rise to many startups, many unicorns. Uh, every country is interested in the city of Bengaluru. How do you see this verdict? Well, state elections can be a crazy time for investors. Uh, as we saw with uh, Andhra Pradesh a couple of years ago, Tamil Nadu many times over, changes of state governments can be very disruptive to investors, changes in state policy and direction. Karnataka has been a state that's actually changed parties, of course, you know, with three different parties fighting for elections over the years, many, many times. And luckily, there's been relative policy stability throughout that period. So if you look at the state's economic growth and you look at the level of investments, um, you know, the state has been a leader in economic growth, per capita economic growth, attracting investments, not just in services, but more recently manufacturing. I just hope that uh, as Congress takes the reins, as we see a new chief minister come to office, they maintain, maintain that stability that we've seen in other transitions critical for the state's growth. Right. So you, you hope that there will be political stability, and that is what investors really want. Uh, Rahul Varma, coming back to you, as far as the Bharat Jodo Yatra is concerned, do you feel the Bharat Jodo Yatra had an influence as far as the Karnataka result really uh, goes, and that somehow gives Rahul Gandhi more credibility for what he has done with that Yatra? Uh, see, uh, Parikshit, this, it would be hard to make statistical calculations and figure out what was the exact impact of Bharat Jodo Yatra has been. But of course, uh, something like this, uh, of uh, a scale which Rahul Gandhi took for the Congress party and, and basically traveled across the country, is definitely going to help the party. Uh, uh, you know, the Congress party before the Bharat Jodo Yatra uh, uh, was in crisis. And in some ways, there was allegation that nothing is happening in the party, no mobilization on the ground is taking place and all of those things. So in that atmosphere, a leader taking uh, Yatra from uh, the one tip of India to the other tip of India has definitely galvanized the party. And in some ways, this is their first major uh, state victory uh, after Bharat Jodo Yatra, which concluded in January this year. So of course, there is going to be some uh, uh, sort of like credit that will be given uh, to Rahul Gandhi and national leadership. But uh, uh, the Karnataka victory of the Congress party is, like, is largely built on a campaign which was much more local, uh, a party organization in the state which is formidable, and local leadership uh, uh, which is popular. Uh, this is not to deny any credit to the national leadership of the Congress party, but this victory in some ways, one, is made up of the local factors, but, uh, and not just of the Congress party, but also uh, the state uh, BGP uh, uh, and its government, which ran a very, uh, you know, average uh, sort of like government in that sense. And so uh, uh, of the, the flip side is also true. Uh, this in some ways uh, should not also be read as, uh, 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 you know, a verdict on the uh, uh, national level BGP government, right? Of course, they should share a part of the blame for the losses of BJP in the state. Uh, but it's in no way indication of what's going to come in 2024, uh, not just nationally, but also in Karnataka. Hmm. Right. Uh, Zafar Islam, would you admit that the BJP's campaign in uh, the state of Karnataka did not work? They did not choose the right issues. And the attempt to nationalize this election uh, did not really work on the ground. Well... <clears throat> the fact that something has not worked for us is so apparent. That's why we have lost the election. And we will definitely be able to pinpoint those issues or shortcomings once we do introspection and analyze the election result. Having said that, uh, th there are certain things which, as I said earlier, in this, uh, uh, earlier that there are certain things which is very, very... Obvious, and there are some things which I think we'll, we will introspect and find out what went wrong and what is the course correction. But uh, it is not a referendum on anything like uh, Congress party is claiming. It is a, a state election based on state issues, based on the local issues, and based on the local leaders. Uh, definitely every political party used their, pol uh, if the Pan-India party definitely will use their senior leaders, and we have also used the senior leaders. But... The outcome is based on mm. three things which I, as of now, I feel. One, the the campaign, uh, uh, Congress party, is a, the entire campaign was communalized by the, uh, by the Congress party and it was full of lies. 
they had been they were spreading so as a result they have been the beneficiary of muslim vote getting transferred from jds to congress party they have been able to succeed purely because of the campaign they the narratives and the communal campaign they had ran away from that something i'm sure that some okay. some of the uh, some of our strategies has not worked on the ground that will something we will get to know and we will do a cross correction before 2024 election all right uh, let me go across to dp satish once again uh, dp satish as some of our panelists were also pointing out that uh, somehow the bjp workers on the state had had given up 20 25 days back why did that happen also was the lingayat vote bank upset with the way uh, lingayat leaders some of the tall lingayat leaders Uh, had been treated some of them had jump shipped to the congress party as well parikshit look at the vote share bjp hasn't lost even 1% vote because in 2018 bjp was polled 36% vote they have retained the same what has happened is in old mysore region which is a gouda stronghold the jds stronghold jds has lost about 8% votes and these votes have been transferred to congress and congress has won a lot of seats from this region and congress could sweep hyderabad sorry mumbai karnataka region or what is now known as kittur karnataka region which is a lingayat stronghold only because bjp has lost 4% votes in kittur karnataka region because these 4% votes maybe lingayat vote those votes have been shifted from bjp to congress that's why congress could win so many seats from that region and how did bjp retain its 36% because bjp gained 6% vote share votes in bengaluru region but these the 6% votes haven't mm-hmm. been translated into seats for bjp that's why bjp has lost about 40 seats because mm-hmm. if you take 2018 data bjp won 104 seats and this time they have won 65 which means they have lost 39 seats but they have retained the same vote share because of this and we can easily conclude that it was a closely fought election in which congress has won impressively and congress victory is impressive because of this because it was a closely fought election because bjp hasn't lost its vote share it has retained the same vote share of 36% and i don't think bjp workers had given up right because bjp uh, workers had campaigned actively across the karnataka okay and they campaigned in every assembly seat all right so you're saying that uh, this was a uh, majorly a result of jds losing its vote share to the congress party something that uh, rashid kidwai had also noted at the start of this discussion but uh, uh, rohan if i can come to you right now what would the congress now like to replicate in the remaining assembly elections this year you got elections in chatisgarh you got elections in madhya pradesh rajasthan uh, as well you're on mute okay uh, basically our challenge is to ensure that we keep elections at local level we started this experiment with himachal where we were successful the state the, the national president of bjp was from himachal the minister central minister were also from himachal it was a small state easier for bjp to win compared to karnataka but we ensured that whoever goes there any national leader of congress party they talk only about the local issues our promises of old pension scheme our different promises our guarantees there and we were successful we, we were successful because people resonated with our promises they liked the approach of congress party we ensured that two two cms then rajasthan cm and chatisgarh cm they 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 campaigned there with the promises which they made to the people of their own state and fulfilled in time bound manner so we could get that confidence of people that this is the party which talks about people and delivers when government is formed same experiment we continued in karnataka we mm-hmm. ensured that five guarantees which were well drafted after good research that what is the requirement of people of karnataka and uh, irrespective of whatever bjp spokesperson mm-hmm. said it was the most possible positive campaign ever in the in, in the politics of indian uh, uh, arena and i am proud of it because i was there for 45 days we ensured that it is all about the people of karnataka it is all about what we can deliver it is all about what we deliver in other states and at the same time we were lucky that we had a bjp government which could not fulfill even 10% promises out of 600 promises made by them in last manifesto they were ready they were not even ready to talk about these issues bombay the cm he declared in month of january that he will come out with the white paper showing that how many promises have been fulfilled which they could not do 
So let let me tell my friends of BJP that please don't mm. ignore the people's sentiment. You need to hear their voice. You need to hear their how, how mm. what are their issues, what are their uh, problems. If you don't ignore them and just work on emotive issues, making it a personal issue, disrespect, Hindu, Muslim, that's not going to work. People have seen everything. So we as a political party okay. now, we have to deliver right. now. And we will ensure that the confidence put by people on us mm. will not go west and we will start delivery in Karnataka because after four months, we have five big elections and our delivery here will right. ensure that people in those five states, they will put trust on us again. Hmm. All right, uh, but a lot uh, to go over the next few months. You've got uh, almost elections in five states. You've got the general election next year. And then we'll come down to the key issues. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. All our guests, Richard Rosso, Zafar Islam, D.P. Satish, Rohan Gupta, uh, Rahul Varma and Harish continue with us. We'll now be talking about issues that really mean a lot to people of Karnataka and what will be expected of the new government in the days to come. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. और उन्होंने पूरे देश में आज ये संदेश दे दिया है कि जो राजनीति जनता चाहती है वो अपनी समस्याओं के समाधान की राजनीति चाहते हैं हमारे परमादरनीय कांग्रेस के अध्यक्ष जी खारगे जी और पूर्व अध्यक्ष जी श्री राहुल गांधी जी उन्हीं के नेतृत्व में ये चुनाव लड़ा गया उन्हीं की अगुवाई थी भारत जोड़ो यात्रा में Rahul Gandhi ji ne jo Karnataka se yatra nikali usme jo 91 shayad ya 91 se vidhan vidhan sabha thi unme se 75 pratishat jeeti gayi hai congress dwara congress adhyaksh ji ne man banaya ki congress ko jitana hi hai ek mahine se ve Karnataka mein rahe unhi ke netritv mein mein pura sanchalan hua Can you start banking with Asia's safest bank instantly? Yes, you can. But can I also find a branch before I finish this? Yep, on your phone and at 500 plus branches in India. And what if I need a bank for my business? We've got you too. For not just small businesses, but for the really big ones too. Live more, bank less. DBS. We don't just design new cars. We create new ways to design all cars. In fact, we make the whole world of India's mobility. New forever. Remember the dialogue from Ford versus Ferrari? 7,000 RPM, the machine becomes weightless. 9,000 RPM. That is where the machine and the man become one. If there was ever a day that felt completely satisfying, this would be it. Who, who, who? Who said the markets can't be exciting? Who? Get the lowdown on the yays and mays. Straight from the top, catch market feels and news reels. Number crunch for the best of the bunch. The bigger queue for the richer you. Hot trends, big noise, what's viral and what's out. We'll give you the market goals you need to stay ahead. Mad about markets. The last hour. Anything can happen between the bells. But what happens during the last hour is what matters the most. The biggest market swings. A close-up look at what's driving them. And how the investors are reacting. Watch the most seasoned market mavens guide you through the most important hour of the trading day. NSE Closing Bell. At these times, 
only on CNBC TV 18 and CNBC TV 18.com. Co powered by IBM. Welcome back. You're watching Election Exchange, our special analysis of the Karnataka election result. Why have voters voted the way they have and what does this mean for the national picture? But before we go to our guests again, let's listen in to uh, Chief Minister of Karnataka, Basavraj Bumai, conceding defeat. Once all the results come, because they're all trends are there now, once the results come, we'll do the detailed analysis. And uh, uh, as, as a political party and as a national political party, uh, we'll not only analyze and uh, we'll see that what are the gaps and what are the uh, deficiencies were there and at different levels. We'll look into that and improve upon it. And we'll take this uh, result in our stride and we'll go ahead and uh, reorganize the party Hello? and come back during Lok Sabha election. All right, that was... Uh the Chief Minister of Karnataka conceding defeat. Let me go across to Richard Rosso of CSIS. Uh, Richard, coming back to ease of doing business and the kind of reforms that state of Karnataka needs, uh, you're someone who tracks states in India very closely. Uh, what is the unfinished agenda, according to you? Uh, and what we've really heard about corruption allegations against the government, but what, according to you, really mattered to the voter in this election, Richard? Well, you know, corruption still remains pretty endemic in doing business, particularly at the state level, whether it's uh, no matter which party is in charge. So uh, I know the allegations came, but it's but it's fairly common. Companies report it, talk about it quietly, but uh, kind of ever present. Uh, you asked Parkshit, though, about the unfinished agenda. And I think Karnataka's unfinished agenda is emblematic, I think, of what I'd like to see around India. And it was actually included there in the Congress Party manifesto among the eight million things they promised. But the one that jumped out at me was strengthening uh, uh, city and municipal governance. Uh, right now, when you talk about India uh, succeeding in making India and the kind of infrastructure challenges that India faces, uh, Bangalore is very much emblematic of that. It's a place where you've got the talent, you've got the expertise, you've got a good wave of investment, but the infrastructure is just creeping. So I'd say from, from the global perspective, uh, the agenda that we'd like to see in Karnataka by the next government is really focusing on ring fencing and developing finance at the, at the city level and allowing cities to take local decisions and allowing cities to grow. Again, if you read through the uh, the 60-plus page uh, manifesto that Congress released, it's in there, but uh, I don't know that I'd say it's necessarily highlighted. Uh, top line, you actually see things like uh, a, lot of, a lot of programs for giveaways, including uh, expanding uh, free electric, uh, access to electric power, which has actually been one of the main inhibitors for state governments to meet some of their climate goals. Karnataka, of course, has been uh, overachieving uh, through both Congress as well as BJP on a lot of its renewable energy and climate goals. So cities, I think, uh, Parkshit is, is kind of the unfinished agenda. If they can improve infrastructure in Bangalore, make it a place that more companies can go to, more people want to live in, uh, that, that, that could be the real uh, engine for, for the state's growth over the next uh, 20 years. Richard, what do you feel about the national picture? Uh, this, this election was also a litmus test in, in far as the, uh, the Bharat Jodo Yatra of uh, Rahul Gandhi was concerned. So what do you really feel about the national picture emerging from this election? Well, I, I think uh, it, it's fairly understood, and I agree with the point that, um, you know, you, you've got an issue where uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's popularity just has not translated to, uh, to the state elections. Um, you saw it five years ago. Uh, the, the party was losing state elections ahead of the national election and still did very well in the national election. There was actually a four-year period where the BJP didn't win a single party majority in any state election, uh, except for one or two of the northeastern states. And yet, you know, nationally, uh, they were still the party of choice when it came time. So I don't know that this is necessarily going to tilt things um, when you look at the national election less than a year away. But uh, as one of the previous speakers mentioned, uh, we do have the big Grand Slam elections coming up at the end of the year. Those are tracked a lot more and tend to be a little bit closer to the bellwether, uh, what happens there uh, in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, uh, Chhattisgarh, Telangana. So uh, we'll be watching this very closely, uh, uh, Parchit. Right. Uh, and we'll be coming back to you in just a bit, uh, Richard. But let me go back to uh, D.P. Satish once again. Uh, D.P. Satish, uh, has the conversation within the Congress already begun? We reported a short while back that there is a high-level meeting on uh, possibly to review the election 
and uh, take the first steps towards deciding who could lead uh, the state for the Congress party. Uh, what's, what's your bet, really? And could we be looking at political instability within the Congress party, within the government? Could the decision on who will be the chief minister See, be so easy? Congress can't waste much time on this because they will have to decide. The obvious choice is between D.K. Shukumar and Siddharamaya. D.K. Shukumar has led the party because he is the KPCC president and known for his organizational skills. And D.K. Shukumar has also got a lot of seats for Congress in the Old Mysore region because Wakaliga seem to have voted Congress because of his leadership. But Siddharamaya is a much bigger leader than D.K. Shukumar. And Siddharamaya has campaigned across Karnataka and he has also got a lot of seats for the Congress party on his own. So party high command will have to choose between Sidramaya and D.K. Shukumar. Sidramaya has more experience, has already been the chief minister for a full five-year term. And Sidramaya will definitely take climb to the post of chief minister. And D.K. Shukumar will not give up so easily. That's why Rahul Gandhi, then Congress President Malikarjun Karge and others will have to talk to both of them and they will have to choose one of the two leaders. At the same time, Congress will have to please other cats because Lingayat seem to have voted Congress big because... 38 Congress MLS are Lingayat, about 30% Lingayats will definitely demand their pound of flesh. At the same time, Congress has won 15 ST seats and very big and about 80% of the ST seats Congress has won. And Congress ST leaders will also demand something big. At the same time, SC is about 20, then backward classes about 30, then also Gaudas about 20. So all these cats will demand their pound of flesh and it's not going to be so easy for the new chief minister to form his cabinet because all these cats will have to be accommodated. Even the Muslims have won 8 out of 10 or 12 seats they fought. So all these communities will demand something big and they demand their big share. And next chief minister, whoever becomes a CM of Karnataka, mm. will have to tread cautiously because he will have to please all the cats. He can't afford to displease anyone. Right. Okay, uh, let me go across to N. Harish of uh, the Bangalore Political Action Committee. N. Harish, what is the biggest course correction that the BJP needs after this election, uh, according to you? Before I answer this, before I answer your question on this, I have two other uh, statements to make. One is, uh, as regards the uh, next year MP election, before that, uh, Bangaloreans would like to see there is a bang BPMP election to happen in Bangalore. See, there was a new law made specifically for Bangalore called the Gross Bangalore Maharagari Palika Act 2020. And though the act has been passed in 2020 December, till today the election rules under the act have not been framed. Because of which there is no BPMP, the Municipal Corporation election in Bangalore. So we would, the, the, the new, newly elected government perhaps may think of ensuring that the rules are framed and they would like to have the BBMP election happen before the uh, MP elections next year, uh, uh, which may be like the semi-finals to, uh, to, to test the popularity of the newly elected government in Bangalore. The other is the uh, two other issues which have been long pending in Bangalore is, is uh, the uh, Bangalore zonal okay. regulations, which expired in 2015, have never been revised so far. It's almost seven years. Mr. Harish, later, uh, we're running out of time. I'll request you to wrap up in about 10 15 seconds. The development plan has been done, and there is no progress in this regard, in spite of uh, the earlier government setting up committees, but nothing happened. As regards your question on BJP, BJP needs to do a lot of introspection to ensure that uh, uh, there is uh, local issues uh, which were put into local voice was put into action to ensure victory of the Congress party. Hmm. And uh, in the campaign, more of the national issues okay. were put in front. And uh, uh, because of which uh, BJP could right. not gain much of, uh, of the the vote share. Though they have the vote share, they did not translate the vote share into seat All share. All right. We've run out of time. Mr. Harish, Richard Rosso, uh, Rohan Gupta, Zayed Zafar Islam, and uh, Rahul Verma, thank you very much for joining us here on Election Exchange. The Battle for Karnataka. DP Satish, thank you once again for being with us. Uh, you have been really spearheading the coverage for the network since morning. Thank you once again, all of you, for being with us here on CNBC TV 18. That was a wrap on this edition of Election Exchange. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 for more news and updates.